we know that Joe Biden was involved. And that's where, at the end of the day, we have to get to the bottom of that. So do, can you identify any actual policy decisions that Joe Biden has made in, in response to getting paid for those policy changes? Well, we'll have to, that would be part of the investigation. And that is where we are when it comes to House Republicans pushing an impeachment inquiry into President Biden. Some have openly admitted that they have no evidence, but they support the inquiry so they can find some. Here to discuss Ron Filipowski, his first visit to the 11th hour. He's the Midas Touch editor in chief, former federal prosecutor. And if you don't, he is a must follow on the Twitter machine. If you're still going to be on Twitter, that's a guy to follow. And Juanita Tolliver is here, MSNBC political analyst and host of Crooked Media's What a Day podcast. Ron, I don't even understand what your day comprises of because you are an animal <laughs> following Republicans, everything they say, everything they do. You're like a fact-checking beast. You actually posted <laughs> that Nancy Mace clip on Twitter today. That's how I saw it. Right? There she is going, well, we haven't seen anything yet, but that's what we're going to find out. Yet tonight, after the vote, GOP leadership released a statement that read, the evidentiary record is impossible to ignore. What are they even talking about? <laughs> well, you're right that I've been pretty heavily immersed in the uh, right-wing ecosystem, and, and part of that has been watching Rudy Giuliani's podcast for several years. So, God bless so I'm pretty oh, familiar gosh. with all of the <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty familiar with all the the Hunter Biden, you know, laptop stuff because I've been watching Rudy present it for a couple of years now on his podcast. So the, the problem is what they're missing is and what they what they promised, what James Comer promised over and over again in interviews throughout 2022 is that he had five to ten million dollars in bribes from foreign governments paid directly to Joe Biden. And they've never been able to come up with that. And they've never been able to show that connection. The only thing he's been able to come up with so far is, you know, a couple of a forty thousand dollar check and then some car payment checks. And that and that's about it. Um, and the other problem is what what was just alluded to right there, they can't ever show any policy, anything that Joe Biden actually did that benefited Hunter or any of his business partners. Juanita, every House Republican is now on the record voting for an impeachment inquiry into President Biden. It's kind of what Kevin McCarthy was shielding them from. Because right. now they got to go back home, right? Especially those who are in districts where Joe Biden won. How's that going to play for them? It's not going to land, Stephanie. Like, this entire PR stunt, it's chum for the GOP primary voter base. It's chum for Trump and the supporters that he holds in his hands that Republicans don't want to lose. But the reality is, when you are running in a, in a district that Biden won in 2020 by a wide margin, this is not the move. This is not something you can sell at home. And I hope that uh, in 2024, in the lead up to the election, we just continuously see Democrats running back this footage of the reality that Republicans don't have anything to go home to celebrate, don't have anything to go home and show their supporters. Because as this vote was happening, all my mind kept going to is like, oh, they absolutely not only just have no regard for facts or the truth or evidence, but they have no desire to govern. They have no desire to deliver anything for voters, whether that's lowering prices, whether it's figuring out how to fund the government or, you know, providing aid to Ukraine. Or what about a gun violence prevention bill and assault weapons ban stuff, right? There's so many things that the American public wants that Republicans have no desire to pick up and do. And I appreciate that Democrats are already hitting the drum on this dysfunctional Republicans narrative, because that is the message that needs to transcend to voters, no matter where they are, because what comes with Republicans is more MAGA platforms and PR stunts and nothing of substance. Well, the American people want and deserve the truth, so we got to help get it to them. New topic. I want to share a bit of what Ron DeSantis said last night at a CNN town hall. What Biden wants to do with the Green New Deal, what they're doing in California, they want to increase demand for electrical, like by forcing electric vehicles, which I oppose, but at the same time, they're kneecapping reliable energy, oil, gas, and the like. 
For fact's sake, President Biden is in no way kneecapping reliable energy. In fact, U.S. oil production has hit record levels recently. So, Ron, how do Democrats make sure voters are hearing the truth about these false claims that Republicans are making? They, they repeat these things over and over again. I mean, we, we, we saw it with the gas stoves, you know. Any okay. sort of energy initiative, we see it with EVs. Uh, Donald Trump talks all the time. He, he said that, you know, the, the Democrats want to take away your cars. They want to take away, they want to shut down all the auto plants. They want to send all the, all the EV jobs over to China. Uh, he says that stuff all the time. So... Any time they're talking about innovation, being more efficient, coming up with a more efficient products, uh, they're scaring people. They're making people think, we're going to take away what you have now. And, and so I think the important thing is, when they start to demagogue, you've got to get out there and you've got to get the facts and say, no, these things, they aren't mandates. Nothing's being taken away. These are, a lot of these things are advisory guidelines that are being put out. That's all they are, but they're, but they're fear-mongering with them. Juanita, let's talk about the economy, because Republicans really prey upon the fact that people don't feel good about it. Life is expensive. Mm. But that storyline is running out for them. Today, the Fed announced that they're holding rates steady. They could cut them three times next year, which will be a huge win for Bidenomics. And the Dow was pushed to an all-time high. How are Republicans going to play this if the economy keeps moving in a better and better way, which all signs point to the fact that it could be? I mean, Stephanie, I don't think the Republicans have any qualms about continuing to lie to the American people, right? I feel like that's going to be the move they make. But let's be real, with these numbers, with this data that's coming out, with the projections by the Fed, that's the economic rebuttal that the Biden administration has been looking for for the past two years, right? It's about creating the conditions that people can feel that impact their pockets. And we know that all of the legislation and all of the investments that have come from the Biden administration and Democrats in Congress have been laying the groundwork for that. So for it to come to fruition now in a tangible way that impacts how people are looking at their bank accounts and what they're spending and what they're feeling, that is a massive thing for the Biden campaign. And you better believe that Democrats are going to tout that every single day, because that's something that's going to stick with voters as they prepare to head to the polls in 2024. How are they feeling? It answers the question of what have you done for me lately or how have you improved my life in a major way. So I don't think that this announcement or this projection from the Fed could have come at a better time. It's just about what people can feel next year.